Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. This is kind of a continuation of the previous video. So if you haven't watched that one yet, you probably want to become familiar with that before watching this video. But in summary, what I did in the last video was I built a power supply. I purposely started with a very poor quality supply that didn't have enough capacitance and had quite a bit of ripple. In fact, it had three volts of ripple per rail, and it powered an op-amp circuit. So what I did is record some music by passing it through the op-amp, and I did it with this lousy supply with three volts of ripple. Then I did an ideal supply using batteries. Of course, there's no mains electrical noise issue. Other than that, what could be picked up from the wires. Of course, there's no ripple as well. And I posted both of those samples in the video. The idea was to show that the op amp, in the case of the NE5532, did very well of rejecting that noise from the supply. However, in the silent portion of those samples, the one with the poor supply, if you're able to turn the volume up loud enough, you could hear that ripple. It was very quiet. It was almost in the noise floor, but it was there. Now, most people said they couldn't hear any difference. And somebody said, well, I could hear the difference in the music. So what I'm going to prove, I, I, you know, I don't think there is really any meaningful difference. So what I'm going to do is perform what's called a null test or a differentiation. So the idea is to take two amplifiers, one on the bad supply, and one on the battery supply, just as I set it up before, and feed their outputs into a differential amplifier and see what comes out. Ideally, you'd want to test just one amplifier by comparing the input signal with the output. However, that's more involved than I want to get into in this video. So here's a simplified diagram of the setup. We have our two amplifiers. We have a signal source here. And this has to be the exact same signal source. It can't come, it can't be the same signal from two different sources. It has to be the same source that's split by wire and fed into the inputs of each amp. Now, because the resistor values and uh, variances in the gains of the transistors and parts inside the amplifiers, there will be slight differences in gain. So you'll have to have a control here, a nulling control that allows you to null the signal as much as you can. So that's really just a balance control that shifts the signal. So let's say this amplifier is putting out a bit less signal due to, you know, some tolerance in the resistor or something like that. You shift this balance control up just a bit to give it a teeny bit more signal. Now, even with 1% resistors, there are tolerances, and it's enough to give you output from the differential amplifier. So it is a very sensitive circuit. And, of course, the output goes into the differential amp, which subtracts the signal. And I did, drew a little diagram down here. So let's say you have amp A, amp B. You put in the same signal, and you're comparing the outputs here. Let's say we take a slice of time and measure the voltage coming out of the amp at that exact point in time. And let's say it happens to be 3 volts here and then we measure 3 volts here. So we use our equation here. It's just A minus B. So 3 minus 3 is 0. And the O with the DIFF subscript, that just means the output of the diff amp. Now let's say there was something that caused difference. Let's say we measured 2 volts on amp A and 3 volts from amp B at that same point in time. 2 minus 3 would be negative 1, so we would be getting some value from the output of the differential amp. But this is continuously measuring and comparing the outputs from both amps and giving us a result in real time. 
Now another way of doing this I mentioned before is just having one amplifier and comparing its input and output signals, differentiating those signals and see what the difference is. Well, if the amplifier has gain, you know the signal's already larger, so you would have to uh, put a circuit in, uh, some sort of divider that cancels the gain of the amplifier. Another problem is, you know, any amplifier is going to have a very small phase shift. So you would have to look at the transfer function of the amplifier. You'd have to make a bode plot and then try to rig up a circuit that would cancel that effect before it goes into the differentiator on the input side of the circuit. In other words, give it the same phase shift. So once you got that taken care of, everything you would be measuring then would be residuals, distortion, frequency response, and noise. You know, doing all of that is a bit more involved than I'd like to explore that maybe in a future video. But right now I'm going to use the two amplifier method. So as I said, I set up the two amplifiers, you know, the same gain and everything. I'm using 5% resistors. Even with 1% resistors, I would still have to null the signal with the control. So this is the null control. So I can adjust that to null out the signal. To start with, both op amps are powered by the same power supply. That will be like a control test because it's getting the exact same power. And then I'll move on and connect the power for this amp to a battery. And we'll do the null test again and see if we can null out the signal. After that, I would like to plug in a different op amp like a TL072 or you know some of the different op amps I have and see if I can still null out that signal. So the differential amplifier is just a simple audio amplifier that I plugged into a speaker. Okay so let me start the music sample of course it's YouTube safe music from the YouTube library I don't know if you can hear that in the background. But let me show you what's coming out of each amp. So that's amp A signal and amp B. It should be the exact same. Now I have the null control off to the side a bit. And you might be able to hear that. So if I center this control, it completely nulls out. Okay, and it's very touchy to get that perfect. Let's see if you can hear that. You should just be able to hear noise, maybe just the slightest touch of music. It's pretty much lost in the noise floor. Now, what's interesting is you're not hearing the hum from the supply. The reason being, well, both supplies are, or both amplifiers are getting that same amount of hum, so those would differentiate out. There would be nothing left. Now, in the real world, they won't perfectly null out because like I said I can hear the slightest bit of music but that is so low down in the noise floor compared to the similarity or the sameness of the two amps that absolutely impossible that anybody could hear the difference in the real world. Well before I show you the different supplies let me show you another thing. Changing the frequency response of one of the amplifiers a little bit will create a difference that goes into the differentiator and give, gives us an output. So I'll change the value of the input cap by paralleling it with another one. And let's see here. I don't know if you can hear that. Now I'll take that capacitor off and the signal's gone again. Well, I increase the value of the input capacitance, giving the amplifier slightly more bass response. 
So because this one had more base response now, there was an output difference, which would, of course, be in the base frequency range. That's why you could hear that bass coming out of that speaker. Okay, I got this big brick of D batteries. Completely overkill, but made a little virtual supply. So you can see this wire is the positive rail for this op amp. And this is the negative rail and the ground. Of course, this op amp over here is still being powered by what I'm calling the terrible supply that has a lot of ripple. So, can you hear that buzz? I don't know if the camcorder picks that up, but now there is a buzz. The reason for that is because this amp, this op amp has the buzz, this one does not, so it's a difference in the signal and it's going to come out of the differentiator. Whereas before, they were both putting out the same amount of buzz and it completely canceled. So let me show you what's going on with the music. That's amp A on the bad supply. This is the amp B on the batteries. And of course, when I take that off, it's completely nulled out. There is just no signal. So that's proof positive that the music signal coming out, you know, with the bad supply compared to the batteries powered amp, it just shows you that's the exact same music because it nulls out. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I have a different op amp. This, of course, is the NE5532. This is the LM4562, which is supposed to be a high performance op amp, and it is. So what's the difference? Actually, there is some difference. A slight a bit of music gets through and hum. So the supply voltage rejection is a bit different between the amps. And, you know, I'm, let's see if I can null it any better, but, you know, some slight amount of music gets through. It's still in the noise floor. I just couldn't see any way that anybody could tell the difference because the sameness of the signals coming out of those two amps compared to the difference is huge amounts and we're talking stuff that's almost into the noise floor so there's no way that I could see how anybody could tell the difference in sound between those two op amps okay let's try another op amp Okay, so now I have an LM833 here, and this is still the NE5532. Mm, a little bit of music getting through. Quite a bit of hum. I'm getting a lot of that ripple hum through. So the uh, SVR differences between the two amps is allowing that ripple to get through because when you remember when we had any 55 32s in both amps there was no hum at all okay now I plugged in a TL072 and you can probably hear in the background this one doesn't null nearly as much and wow listen to that hum the TL072 has pretty horrible supply rejection because it's letting a lot of hum through. Because I know the NE5532 is doing a much better job and we're getting so much hum there. And there is a bit of difference. I can't quite null the music out. But still it's so low. I, you know, I have a hard time believing anybody could tell the difference. Even with the TL072, which by the way is a chip I would not recommend using in an audio circuit. You would definitely need a very good supply with the TL072 because, you know, it, it doesn't have as good supply rejection. Well, there you have it. A differentiation or a null test, whatever you want to call it. 
I thought that was pretty interesting. So with both any 5532 chips, regardless of the supply I had it on, I could null the music out. So there's no audible difference in the music. Well, that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Well, hello, sir. What can I do for you? You want what? You want what? Oh, look at that seeing orb. Focus in on that seeing orb. <laughs>